this renovation on the interior was jointly funded with a jointly funded project by the New York City Council District 5 with an appropriation of $364,000 the New York City Department of Postal Affairs, DCA, and REAP with a total project cost of $2.9 million. The work included the work included installation of new stairs, ceilings, doors, trimming, HVA system, and plumbing. A new ADA compliant access ramp was added to provide access to the front porch, allowing accessibility inside the home to all visitors. Thank you to all who been thank you to all who work with the division, the Black Our House historically accurate. We not be here without the continued support of our elected officials. DCA and Judy Birdie, the president of the Rosa Island Historical Society, who is the driving force to position funding on the renovation of the interior, working with the New York City Council District 5 to keep the project a priority since 2010. Today is a significant day to see this home with such deep roots on the island to be restored to a beautifully renovated space for the community and visitors, and the visitors would like to enjoy. I'd also like to give a special thank you to our returning REAP employee, Jennifer Sano. Jenna was instrumental with the design and the work inside the house as well. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce one of the most of our champions and strong advocates, Council Member Ben Kalos. Woo. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Council Member Ben Kalos, that's at Ben Kalos on social media. I have the privilege of representing the Upper East Side, East Harlem, and none other than Roosevelt Island. I've been a council, I've been waiting for this ribbon cutting for six years, 10 months, 17 days, 11 hours, 46 minutes, and 29 seconds. And I don't think I can wait a, a moment longer. Uh, my predecessor, Councilmember Jessica Levin, if you can just stand up because she deserves a huge round of applause, uh, allocated the $354,000 for this project in our first year in 2007. And I would say we, we spent the first two years of my, my term in office fighting over this project. First, as it turns out, when you get newly elected, the speaker tries to take all the capital money that hasn't been spent yet. So, so we, we engaged in some advocacy and made sure that we kept the money there. And then once the money's there, you have to fight with the agency to actually award it. And we were able to get DCA to actually publicly notice the award in December of 2016. And when that happened, we could get that money over to REOC in 2017. And uh, I want to thank uh, REOC for, I believe, $2.9 million in additional funds and for getting this done over 13 years later. Now, to be clear, projects like this should not be celebrating their bar mitzvah at their ribbon cutting. And uh, I, I've been cutting more than ribbons as a chair of the contracts committee as we try to cut bureaucracy and red tape like this. And so if you've got a stalled project like this, uh, please give me a call because there is a new sheriff in town and that being said, I am no Captain John Manning. I am not the Sheriff of New York City, and I do not get the privilege of owning what would become Roosevelt Island. Uh, this was built back in 1796, and 234 years later, we have a new Blackwell House, which will stand here for generations. Uh, Roosevelt Island is a, uh, is a diamond in the uh, crown of our city. It is an attraction uh, between four freedoms, uh, the, the smallpox, and, and uh, everything that we have on the south points of the island. Uh, we've been looking for things we can do to bring people north. And so I just want to thank Judy Birdie, because this was all her idea. And uh, now we have a, a location for the Historical Society. Uh, we'll probably have to now man two locations. Uh, the, the three locations, the visitor center is just so, so, is so iconic using the old subway entrance. It has become what everyone's destination is. 
And I don't think that everyone buys anything at the store, but I do know they get lots of good directions from the Historical Society and everyone there. And as part of what makes this uh, area welcome, uh, I can't be a weird wait to be a cheerleader as we start to get put together the official Roosevelt Island destination guide with the Historical Society, getting folks to go from uh, the, the Four Freedoms, the, the small pox site, uh, up here and all the way up to the lighthouse and back and just spending money right here on the island and reviving our commercial floor. I, I want to thank Shelton Hayes, the acting president, it's a tremendous partnership. And, and I want to thank our state elected officials, uh, Senator uh, Jose Serrano and Assemblymember Seawright. Uh, this island is, um, is, is actually controlled through the state, and so it is the state elected officials who are able to do the most here, and they, they deserve all that applause, please, for, for all the great work that they do, and to also the, the REAC board members who I see here today. Thank you very much. guest speaker, our New York State Senator, Jose Serrano. Thank you very much. Uh, such an honor to be here with all of you, and I'd like to uh, thank RIOC for their great work, and uh, President Haynes and Erica and everyone for uh, putting this together. And uh, my sincere gratitude to Judy Birdie for her advocacy and, and uh, her energy on this issue. And uh, to my good friend Jessica Lavins, I'm so happy that she's here with us today. Uh, and Ben Kalos for doing an amazing job on this. And of course, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to our assembly member, Rebecca Seawright, who is a, a staunch advocate for Roosevelt Island and a great partner in Albany. And I'm so grateful for your leadership uh, here and throughout the state. And uh, this is really a very important event uh, when you consider how culturally significant this location is. In the New York State Senate, I am the chair of the Committee on Cultural Affairs, Parks and Tourism. A place like this is very near and dear to my heart because it really underscores the cultural significance of Roosevelt Island. There's such a rich history, and I believe that Blackwell House will further uh, spur the curiosity of people, tourists, you name it, to explore not only this site, but the long historical significance of Roosevelt Island. It's such a wonderful community, it's such a diverse community, and I'm so grateful to be able to represent all of you in the State Senate. Uh, so it's cold, so I won't keep speaking, but with that, I will say thanks again to uh, President Haynes. Thanks. Thank you, Senator. Our next speaker, our Senate member, Member C. Wright. Roosevelt Island in the 76th Assembly District. I have two presentations to make. Some hand sanitizer from the state for Blackwell House. We can never have too much of this in today's environment. And a citation. Uh, to present this day, the landmark is listed in the National Register of Historic Places and will be home to the island's most historical treasures, records, and archives. We recognize its importance as a resource to our community for generations to come. treasures. 
I commend the Roosevelt Island Historical Society, Judy Birdie, for her diligent work to preserve and educate the history of Roosevelt Island. We also extend our appreciation to outgoing RERA President Lynn Shinazaki, who's dressed appropriately for the occasion for her 29 years of service, and REAC President Shelton Haynes for your outstanding leadership, along with my colleagues, Councilman Kalos, and it's wonderful to see former council member Jessica Lappin back on Roosevelt Island today. What a treat. And Senator Jose Serrano, my partner in Albany, who I, I look up to and admire so much. We also have the governor's office represented today by Daniel Dornbaum from the 76th Assembly District. Daniel. Um, and our REAC board members here, Howard and Michael and others, it's so good to see all of you. Thank you for coming out on this cold, cold day for this wonderful <laughs> celebration. Congresswoman Maloney and I were here a couple of weeks ago and took a tour, and it's just absolutely beautiful and amazing. Thank you again. Thank you, Assembly Member. Next up, Linda Manley, New York State HCR General Counsel and Co-Chair of REAC Board. Thank you. 
unfortunately it closed in 1992, and it had some problems to say the least. But I'm so glad that it's been restored. And working with Janice this summer, where's Janice? My glasses are fogging up. It was wonderful in designing the interior. And also, I can't, what was the name of the company we used? That, the artwork you'll see inside the house is amazing. Moe. Moe, in yeah. Moe way. And we're very proud to be back in the house. We're proud to be able to use it for community events and to add to the history, the living history of the island. And I thank everyone involved, Shelton and staff, for getting this finally accomplished and done. And Shelton, I have one more thank you. The other day I sent you a picture of an empty flag that everyone said, oh, it can't be fixed. And I'm very happy to see it. And I look forward to working with everyone in the house and working with REACT to have control with programs and getting us out of the cold. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. It's really a pleasure to work with you through Rose Hill Island. Thank you again, Judy. Again, to our REAC board, thank you again for all the approvals, the change orders, and, and the process with us. <laughs> thank you, Jerome, to the Zaka. Thank you again for your advocacy, your support throughout the years. Congratulations to your retirement. To the REAC staff that are behind the scenes that do all the heavy lifting, all the work, the things that are unnoticed, we really appreciate your effort. Thank you so much publicly. Jessica, Erica, Andrew, and others, thank you again for bringing this event together. Let's let's pretend we uh sorry. We Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone.